Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Keystone Premier Bullet Ultralight 26RB Travel Trailer. I'm here to walk you around the unit, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about a few things I want you to take into consideration when you're parking at the camp. First, consider your slides. You've got a slide on each side. And make sure you leave enough room so those are clear. Not going to touch anything, have any branches hanging over them. I want your slides to have plenty of room. Now I also want you to consider where your electricity and water hookups are so that you can park accordingly and utilize the facilities better. Your power will be at the rear side of your off camp side or your driver's side. And then your docking station will be toward the front of your off camp side. That'll be your water connect. So park accordingly. And after you unhook your hitch, first thing we're going to do is level our unit. Our unit does have a power tongue jack, docking light, and retract to bring down, extend to raise. Now you can put a little level on the side of the unit or set one just inside your doorway as your doorway is about the middle of the unit and get your unit level. Once your unit's level, the next thing you want to do is stabilize your unit. Run on all four corners. You have power stabilizing jacks. Let me show you where to handle those from. You're going to come over to your little docking station here. And on the right side, your rear and front power leveling jacks, or power stabilizing jacks. Now, I do recommend jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet. Excuse me, these are the rear, these are the front. Front or top, just gonna hit extend. They're gonna come down. Now again, I recommend jack pads down here. Jack pads are gonna help protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from hot tar, hot asphalt, sand, dirt. So we've got a pad on them. Bring them down just until they're taut. You don't want to lift the unit at all. Remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. Check. Do the same thing in the back with the bottom ones. Just bring them down until they're taut. Once you've got your unit level, once you've got our unit stable, next thing you're going to do is hook up our water and electricity. Now here in your docking station, a couple different ways to hook up your water. Fresh water tank, city water tank, fresh and city. It's a black tank flush we'll discuss later when leaving the campsite. Water pressure regulator, very important. This is going to reduce the water pressure down to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure set at each park, so use your water pressure regulator every time. Connect this, connect your water hose, but don't turn it on yet. We're going to find our hot water heater. So toward the rear of your campsite is your hot water heater. First thing you want to do is open it up and make sure your drain plug is in. You may have left this out from last time you were camping and draining your hot water heater. So make sure your drain plug is in. Once your drain plug is in, you can go ahead and turn on your city water. After your city water has been on for a while, you're going to come up here and pull this pressure release valve. You're going to pull on that, it's going to release air, release air, and then 
water will steadily flow out it. Once water is steadily flowing out of there, you know your lines are clear, your hot water tank is full, and can be lit up from indoors. Now should you be going camping and you're dry docking, you're gonna use the potable water. So back over here in your docking station, you use fresh water connection. You'll fill that up. Again, do the same thing to your hot water heater. Release the air until you know it's full, then it can be lit indoors. Now, when using the fresh water connect or potable water, you will turn on your water pump. It's the only time you turn on your water pump, you don't turn it on when hooked up to city water connect. So now we've got our water hooked up. Let's go back and do our electricity. On your off camp side, toward the rear, you have this 30 amp cord. Show you how these connect. They push in and then twist to the right and then tighten the gray handle. At the end of your 30 amp cord, should you need to plug into 110, is this amperage reducer. This will bring you from 30 amp down to 110 and you can plug in at home. Got our water and electricity hooked up. Our unit's level and stable. I'm going to walk you around the unit and show you a few other things. The outdoor here in the back underneath your power will be a gray and black tank releases. That's what we'll dump in the dump station. This little piece here is your furnace heat release. So you're clear of that. It will get rather hot. Coming back up to your docking station. A couple of things to look at. Use your battery disconnect. This shuts your battery off or turns it on. It's going to be important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide detector. Below that is satellite and cable TV hookups. And this is so if you want to run your water water line down through there and set up and then you can close your door. Have your big pass through storage. This hand crank is for a manual override for your slide should you not have power to your slide. Speaking of power, I highly recommend when you arrive, check your battery post. Make sure your terminals are nice and tight. Your propane does have a regulator. Simply point the regulator toward the tank you wish to use. Again, your power tongue jack. Coming over here to the rest of your pass-through storage. You do have magnets that hold these. Very convenient. Big storage with cork board here, or peg board, if you want to store some tools. You have your big power awning that will come up over top of your slide. Remember when running that awning out, just want to run it out until your flap is at about 90 degrees. Then you know you've went out far enough. These here are access to the back of your fridge. TV mounting bracket, which means there is a back here in here should you want to put in a mounting bracket for a television. Well, here are your cable and satellite hookups and a 110 for those. Again, your hot water heater. Let's open up your outdoor kitchen. The on hydraulics opens up nicely. Pull out your grill. The back of your grill is this connect, which you can run down underneath and over here to your right side is your LP connect. Make sure to tuck all this away nicely when leaving. Disconnect your LP every time you go somewhere. And then this will slide back. You have to plug in your fridge. You do have one touch lighting out here. And your sink. On the back you do have a area for a bumper grill, an outdoor shower, and your unit is prepped for a backup camera. Should you choose to get a backup camera from our store, Fury Island backup camera will electronically communicate between your unit and this unit. To give you a backup camera. Alright, so walking inside your unit, 
You will notice just inside your entry door is your fire extinguisher. In case of fire, I always know that your fire extinguisher is right by your entry door. Also in the unit, as soon as you walk into your right, is your control panel. So let's start at the top and work our way down. This is to check your tanks. Check your battery, your fresh tank, your black, gray. Just touch the button and show they're empty or getting full. This is where you'll turn on your hot water heater if you're hooked up to gas or if you're hooked up to electric. Make sure you choose the right one. This is where you'll turn on your water pump should you be using potable water. And here's where you'll extend and retract your awning. Below that are your two slides in and out and your porch light and ceiling lighting. Take a walk around your unit now. You have your huge Ascoli television. Furion sound system. This will play music in two different zones. You can play it indoors, outdoors, or both. USB port, headphone jacks, Bluetooth compatible. Uh, this is also a DVD player. Below that, your fireplace. The safety straps up here to keep your television safe while traveling. And over here, turn the fireplace on. Touch here. Now the secret to a fireplace isn't just looks. If you park somewhere and it's a little chilly in the morning, instead of using up your gas, come and turn this on. I can tell you right now, it'll get it toasty in here in no time. Probably quicker than your furnace. Several different modes you can go through for the lighting and shut it off. Next year. So far up here you have a couple USB ports. One touch lighting throughout the unit is really nice. You can go ahead and dim all the lights except maybe the one over the restroom at night. If you haven't seen how your sofa comes down, I'll show you that real quick. Pull the backs off. I like to stand in the middle, lift, open these legs, and pull straight up back towards you. And then lay the back down. And just that quick, you've got another bed. Reverse the process. Back up. Again, I like to stand in the middle, gives you a nice leverage. Fold your legs in and fold it down. And because there's Velcro back there, you throw your backs up rather quickly. Coming over to your dinette table. A couple of more USB ports back here. You have your in house speakers. The other end here, you have your smoke alarm and your AC. In your island, you do have these pop up 110 and USB ports or stored away for all of your. Come here, your stove, you do have a light and a fan. All you'll simply do is turn this to light. Sure. Covers open and turn on your gas. This glass makes an excellent backsplash. Do you have a panel light here as well? Self explanatory microwave. Your Dometic fridge. So this is gas electric. We turn it on. Give it a moment. Now it's on auto. Auto means when it's plugged in, it's running off electricity. As soon as it's unplugged, it'll switch to gas. If you want it to run on gas, simply lift that. Turn it back to auto and shut it off. Come to the back of the unit here, to the left of your bathroom. Is that thermostat? Simply go through the modes. You can turn the fan on, turn the air conditioning on, turn the furnace on. 
everything from here, raise and lower, or simply use a fan. Down below there on the floor is your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. The reason I mentioned 12 volt is because this is constantly running off your batteries. So if you're going to be gone for the day, use that battery disconnect to keep this from running your batteries down. To the right of that, access panel to your breaker box and fuse box. Uh, looks like you got a 10, mostly 15s, a 40. I highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. They do have them in our store as well. And just to the right of that, another 110 and heat release from the furnace. I do want to note in your bathroom is where your GFCI protection is going to be on your 110 in here. Also take note, you have plumbing to keep an eye on. We are bouncing a house down the road, so keep an eye on different fixtures and plumbing. Protect your investment. We'll walk into the bedroom real quick. Show you that you do have your TV hook up here. Your satellite and cable hook up. Over to the right here, you do have a laundry chute. So you can drop laundry down into your storage area. And your storage up top. You have a hand crank vent up here. No fan, just a vent. All right, so let's leave the campsite. First thing you want to do is make sure that your television is secure. You want to make sure this door is closed. Last thing you want to do is make sure is have that door catch on your slide when it comes in and rip your door off, or miss it on the way in and catch it on the way out. So secure that, and then you can come up here and hit in. The slide will run in quickly. What I'm thinking about, I want to mention these wipers. They're around all the sides of your slides. They do have a wiper fluid in our stores that keep those nice and flexible so that they come all the way in for you. And over here, we'll bring this slide in. So once our slides are in, we're gonna come outside, lift your steps, turn this handle, make sure they lock. Close your door, lift and turn this handle. It's also gonna hold your door. Now, deadbolt your door. Remember, you're bouncing a house down the road, you don't need this thing popping open and you're going down the road. So deadbolt your door, use this, and make sure your doors are solid. Now we're gonna come to our hot water tank. We're gonna burp it again, release any air from the lines, and then we're gonna pull our hot water drain. To pull the hot water drain. We're going to come over back to our docking station and underneath our docking station, just behind our levelizing jack, is a fresh water drain. Yeah. Go ahead and open that up, dump your fresh water, and then come to the back of the unit. Now, note you do have two gray tanks. You have one here at the front and one here at the back. So even though we do give you a sewage hose in your convenience pack, I highly recommend going ahead and getting a larger one with an extension. So you can hook up one here, one there, and then run them into the same line into your sewage. Save you from pulling forward and backing up and pulling forward and backing up. So let's start with our black tank. First thing we're going to do at the rear of the unit, Hook up our sewage hose and pull the black tank on the right. Once that black tank's pulled, sewage is dumping. After it sounds like it's all dumped, we're going to go ahead and hook a, leave the line open and hook a water hose along with our pressure regulator to our black tank flush. Now we're going to hook that up and make sure to leave our black tank pulled open. We're going to run that for about five minutes. What that's going to do, it's going to send a sprayer around your black tank and wash all that nastiness out of there. After running that for about five minutes, unhook your water. Come back here and pull your gray tank. Close your black on the right, pull your gray on the left. 
great tanks are going to be your showers, your sinks. That's going to be cleaner water. And it's going to wash your sewage hose out. Again, if you have to, come up to your second gray tank. After closing the rear one, and then pull this one. If you have to bring the sewage hose up here and do it separately, you do. If not, get a separate line, go ahead and pull this. We've got our sewage lines emptied. Last thing we're going to do is take our sewage hose and store it in our bumper. Nice, clean, sanitary place to keep it. Again, we thank you guys for your purchase, for your premiere. Hope you enjoy this for many years to come. Happy camping.